from St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. Sumner High School brought its choir back this year after roughly 20 years without. Our team has checked in with the choir several times over the course of the school year. This week, producer Jane Mather-Glass stopped by a rehearsal to see what they've been up to since their holiday concert in December. After a successful winter performance, the Sumner High School Choir came back in 2022 to prepare for their upcoming show, a Black History Month performance next Friday. Choir director Maria Ellis sets out bottled water and turns on some music. Her students filter in around 1 o'clock as Donald Lawrence and Company's Happy Being Me plays from a rainbow-lit speaker. Looking back on when I started Had a lot of sun and a lot of rain the students grab lyric sheets on their way in. Compared to last semester's songs, the set list for their upcoming show is more contemporary, and Ellis is excited. We're doing some hip-hop and some rap, um, some things that they connected with right away, which is really, was really fun. Ellis chose some music from her era, the 90s. The students are hopping on the trend of bringing the 90s back with some classics of the decade, like Week by SWV and No Diggity by Blackstreet. <laughs> Her students are excited about the direction the choir is taking this semester, too. Brooklyn Robinson has been in the choir since the beginning of the school year. She says she prefers the music they're working on for the Black History Month show compared to their holiday performance. Last semester was like trying to get us to sing, but we're singing more now than, and we're better from last semester. Do you like the songs you're working on now? Yes, way better from last semester. More modern and more things that we know. Robinson will perform a feature verse on Week at next week's show. I'm very like shy and I don't really talk that much, so it's kind of nerve, nerve, nerve wracking. But I like it because like she's like giving me opportunity to show everybody that I I can sing, but I just know I gotta crack open my shell, you know. So, so yeah, it's it's. Excited but nervous. Nervous. Seven months since the choir's creation, Ellis admits they have some tough days. Some rehearsals are filled with energy and enthusiasm, but during others, the students don't feel like projecting or singing much at all. Today is one of those days. I can't hear you all. Let's not go work. Let's go. Come on. Every time I think we're going to go somewhere, then we have a class like this, and I can't, I can't take you out of nowhere like this. Ellis says she hoped the students would be more comfortable than they were back in August, but this semester has felt a bit like starting over. I thought, and this could be my, um, my misunderstanding as a teacher, I thought because our December um, performance went so well that we were just going to keep going up. Um, but we toppled down a few steps, took a few steps back, and now we are on that trail back up. Ellis is a good motivator with a lot of resolve. She always gets the Sumner Choir singing, eventually. of working with a student choir, Ellis says, is that not every day is perfect. The students have a lot going on outside of class, and they bring that with them to the choir. But she sees how the students have grown since August. I think my relationship with them is stronger than it's ever been before, and I'm very, very proud of that. Not only that, but the students' relationships with each other are strong. On Monday, actually, we had, like, some kids who were trying to disrupt, they weren't in this class, but they were like trying to disrupt our class. And like the whole class was like, no, like get out of here. Like we're not playing. And I appreciate that. Um, they've really taken pride in what they do. 
Um, and it's, it's, it's really inspiring to see. Student Keon McConnell agrees. Despite the hard days, he says everyone is really dedicated to the class. Well, you saw, like, I know you saw all the negativity and the things, but we can still do, but we still got, we did have our ups and downs, we still got, but we still got through it either way. Ellis is hopeful about the future of the choir, and she has some big plans for next year. I've been asked to conduct at Carnegie Hall next year, um, and I would love to have students from Sumner on that great stage with me if we're ready. And if we're not ready, that's okay. We'll do some other gigs, but I, I'd love to have some Sumner kids on stage with me. So that's what we're looking forward to for next year. Come on, let's rise up to the level so we can go to Carnegie. They deserve that. It's a journey, but it's a fun journey and I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. That is Jane Mather Glass talking with Maria Ellis and the Sumner High School Choir. The students will perform at Sumner's Black History Month concert. It's slated for 1 p.m. on March 16th. This episode was produced by Jane Mather Glass and edited by Emily Woodbury with podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, honoring Arbor Day on April 26th with an ongoing commitment to sustainable stewardship and conservation of Missouri's forests. Choosewood.com.